Oh, Chan, Chan made everything an adventure, everything except the speed of his, his actual work, uh, but everything else was an adventure. I mean, if you think of a young eight-year-old boy or seven-year-old boy, you know, today kids play with G.I. Joe action figures, and we had a real one who was our uncle because, as I said, he, he never really left the, the military or merchant marine, so he spent most of his time that I knew him in uniform. He wore khaki. Sometimes he wore a tie, and it would be tucked into his blouse, as you would call it, in uh, military fashion. Uh, he'd wear a pith helmet. He drove a Jeep. He called it a vehicle. And so he was always on maneuvers, and it was fun to go out with him because he made it an adventure. Chandler was not a standard issue fella. Chan's work is admirable to most people for its blinding attention to detail. It's almost like fractal geometry. If you get in closer, there's another level of detail. You get in closer with a magnifying glass, you say, oh my God, there's detail on the detail. You have to appreciate it from that standpoint, from a, a technical standpoint and a Ripley's believe it or not, how did he do it standpoint. But it's not everybody's favorite work, and not just because it's nautical and, and often uh, military. We are used to photography and paintings which have conventional composition. So it's a picture of something. So here's the big foreground object that's what the picture is going to be about, and there's some relevant, interesting, well-composed detail around it. Chan's inspiration was the ocean and the, the ships that plied it. And he'd spent so much time there himself and so much time in study of the ocean that his paintings, when he was left to his own devices, were much more faithful to what you would see if you were flying over the ocean and looking down and seeing a ship somewhere than how our conventional notions of a ship on the ocean would have it. We want to see the ship uh, big and bold and get a good look at it, and there's a little sea around it to show that it's on the ocean. Uh, in Chan's paintings, the ocean is absolutely dominant and limitless and gray as far as we can see, and, and lo and behold, here will be this little tiny tanker the size of your finger down in a corner, which makes a unsatisfying painting in terms of composition, but as someone who's, who's sailed across the Atlantic myself, it is absolutely faithful to what it's representing because the ships are inconsequential in the real ocean, and hence his, most of his work captures that feeling of the ship being lost in this huge sea. Chandler's art is very photorealistic down to the most microscopic and mundane detail of these usually military vessels and humble military support vessels that he painted, but he applied equal microscopic rigor to working models of Liberty ships and tankers and other support vessels that he'd construct out of various kinds of metal foil, lead foil, aluminum foil of various weights and, and pliabilities. And he would construct these vessels, which would be absolutely to scale and maybe two or two and a half feet long, sometimes as small as one foot long, absolutely faithful to the original Liberty ship. He would construct them in the same way that the actual ships had been constructed. They were formed by steel members that made a frame and then plates that were riveted onto the, uh, onto the frame and then separately constructed funnels and superstructure and stanchions and railings and whatnot, uh, little winches for the anchor and the anchor itself and the chain. He construct all of these things out of metal foils and bits of arcane debris that he had experimented with and figured out how to work under a magnifying glass. So he'd build a ship the same way it had been built in the shipyard in the 1940s and build it up from the frame and put on all of this stuff. And they were indistinguishable from the actual ships. If you saw a photograph of one of these things and a photograph of one of his models, you wouldn't know which was the real ship. 
and the ships were practical to the extent that they had a working motor in them. He used a little electric motor. He'd make the shaft for the prop out of graphite from a mechanical pencil. Uh, there would be a, a functional propeller, which he would also form out of metal foil. And he could put these ships in calm water, and they would steam along with the little electric motor. But when I was a kid, he was just fascinating. And he was always off on some adventure. And one of the best adventures was when he had one of his new hand-built models of one of these vessels. And we would set off in search of one of the little lakes on Seven Gates or somewhere to, to sail this thing. And one of his deep frustrations was that you can make every aspect of these boats to perfect scale, but he couldn't find scale water because on a lake, they're just ripples. And of course, if you look at one of his paintings or look at the real ocean, you see the real waves and real water are very different. And so he had the perfectly scaled boat on imperfectly <laughs> scaled water and it used to make him crazy.